everybody, how's it hanging? How's it happening? Because you guys always, this is Kevin from the Chord Progression Podcast. Hey, everybody, guess what day it is? It is Tuesday. It is the 28th of June. And this conversation that we have here with Ty from the band Sink In is one of the coolest conversations we've ever had. Just so much stuff around the music industry. It will invigorate you around everything around music. It will invigorate you to support as many bands as possible in the scene, big, small, medium, and support the bands that are breaking through in the mainstream and not, you know, being all curmudgeoned about it. It is an absolutely fantastic episode, but before we get into it, I want to thank our sponsors. So first, support for the Chord Progression Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the belt waist grooming their products are precision engineered tools for your family jewels and their performance package is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle that performance package includes the crop preserver anti-chafe ball deodorant which is a godsend let me tell you that i use it all the time the crop reviver ball toner the weed whacker four or not just the weed whacker i think it's a 4.0 but the weed whacker as well and the lawnmower 4.0 to trim up you down there right here yes You see that light? It's even got a light on there, and it has skin-safe technology, advanced skin-safe technology, might I add. And you want to know what that is? The cutter right here is not metal. It's more of a skin-safe style uh, compound that when you're trimming down there, it's going to be less likely to nick you. It's going to be less likely to hurt you because... During the pandemic, if you had to like shave down there with a beard trimmer or something like that, you probably got nicks all over the place. Like, ah, 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 and you probably didn't want to even go down there because you didn't want to hurt yourself with this. This reduces that so, so, so much, and it makes it so much easier. I've never had a smoother shave down there in my entire life until I started using this bad boy. Thanks to Manscaped, the lawnmower. 4.0, you know, got the light on there. It's waterproof. You're going to have the most precise shave down there that you possibly can with Manscaped's Lawnmower 4.0. Wait, where's the Manscaped logo? There it is. And you know what? You want to know what they do? They save balls. Yes. The Manscaped Daily Wire. Daily News, I should say. That was a Daily Wire, but it's the Manscaped Daily News. These are actually shave mats. For you guys, they are included in the performance pack as well. So you can be reading while you're shaving. And at the same point in time, easy cleanup with these bad boys right here. They they look just like a newspaper too. It's actually pretty freaking cool. So when it comes to your best below the belt care, boom, that's where Manscaped comes in. And if you want to be in that good feeling mode like we are down there, you can trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer we have for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code CPP at manscaped.com. Over 4 million men use Manscaped. Do the math, 4 million times two, that's 8 million balls are taken care of right there. You wanna know where two of those balls come from? This guy. So remember, Manscaped. They save balls. It's your best below the belt care. Sponsor the podcast. 20% off and free worldwide shipping. Use the code CPP10 at checkout. Link is in the description of the podcast. Thank you, Manscaped. Also, don't forget, we are sponsoring the When We Were Hungry Festival happening in Las Vegas on October 20th and 21st of 2022. Tickets are available now for you to go and get because honestly, when a festival it turns memes into dreams this is a meme after when we were young sorry and now it's a freaking reality i mean look who's playing there we've got many bands on the podcast that are on that bill including modern day escape palisades varsity outlier along came a spider is on there um i'm probably missing like one saving vice that's the one i'm always missing. saving vice is on there you got dropout kings on there as well and you know what you want to have pancakes in the pit? You want to join us in the pit? You want to have an absolute blast out in Vegas? Come join us for the We Were Hungry Festival, baby, because we're sponsoring it. I'll be out there both days. Come mosh with us. Come have some pancakes with me. We'll have an absolute great time. So remember, when we were hungry, Festival October 20th and 21st in Viva Las Vegas, Nevada. So go get your tickets now. We trip to the podcast. Now to our feature presentation. So... Thanks to Cody from Theory Records, we got connected with Ty from the band Sink In. Sink In has a brand new EP called Welcome to Fantasyland coming out on August 12th. Their newest song, Bones, just released on June 10th. You can go check it out now. And on this podcast, 
I'll, I'll put it this way. If you're looking for a podcast that brings you energy towards the music scene, that brings you energy into what you're doing like and gets you in a band that is ready for to, you know, take hold and really get you into them. This is the podcast for you. So please welcome Ty from band sync in to the core progression podcast. Are you ready? Let's go. Yeah. Well, 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 ladies and boys and girls, listeners of the Core Progression Podcast, I'm going to send another big thank you to our friend, Mr. Cody Frayne from the difference between Ascent Like Wolves and Theoria Records for bringing us another fantastic band in the podcast. They have a brand new song called Bones, which literally came out the day before we recorded this. So you can go listen to that now. Their brand new EP, Welcome to Fantasyland, comes out on August 12, 2022, and you can pre-save, pre-order that shit right now, so I say you go and do it, but... Let's go and talk to them all about it. So please welcome Ty from the band Sink Into the Podcast. So Ty, welcome to the Core Progression Podcast. What's going on, buddy? How are you doing? I am doing just fine over here. I mean, I'm I'm feeling good. I got the I got the Hawaiian shirt on. I'm feeling, you know, the positive vibes going. So it's a great day. I mean, how's everything going on with you right now? Yeah, you you're you're giving off a good Saturday afternoon, like relaxing in the backyard vibe. I like it. I like it a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot brighter vibe than what's going on here in this in this room. That's that's uh, kind of cutting off my face halfway. So uh, I, I like this. I like this is a good start to the conversation. I'm well. We're in uh, Denton, Texas, for a festival, and uh, uh, it's nice and early. I needed a good nap to get started, and uh, here we are. <laughs> Nap, load in, and then podcast, and then whatever else happens between podcast and uh, setless time then we're ready to roll. But yeah, I don't know why. I'm just feeling the Hawaiian shirt, especially after listening to Bones like pretty much the whole entire week leading up to this just to prepare for it. And then like five or six times, even before we got jumping on here, I'm like, for some reason, that Hawaiian shirt sitting out in the backyard with either, depending upon what your, you know, choice of preference is, whether it's a nice fruity drink, whether it's, you know, something like, like uh, something that, or like just having a drink literally in a pineapple or a coconut, or if you're like me and like beer, Corona with the lime wedge in there, just there sitting on the back, relax and listen to some good music. I mean, that's the vibe we're feeling today. The positive vibe is going on. However, not going to lie, I do like to break this shirt out from time to time again when it comes to going to concerts and jumping in mosh pits. Being the guy in the pit with the Hawaiian shirt is hysterical. There you go. I, there's, a, there's a guy downstairs right now that was hiding the, the standard dinosaur outfit that you see every, every month or so in the pit. And uh, I saw I saw him prepping in the corner. So uh, you can you can join the dinosaur outfit guy in the pit, and um, you pretty much have all the stereotypes covered for for pit, pit leaders. So what <laughs> are all those stereotypes that you have covered? Because I just want to see like what we think those stereotypes are, what we can pick up. Because of course we'll, we'll pick up on some. We'll definitely definitely okay. Kind of see okay. So so far down shit. there, so far down there, I saw dinosaur outfit guy. We saw mustache and mullet man. Uh, gotta have crop top dude. Crop top dude is required. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, what else? Oh, uh, the one, the, the other good one is, uh, goth pants. Like, like the, like the old, like Jinko jeans. Yeah. Where like they, they'd listen to Slayer in their free time, but a lot of their friends are still into the metalcore world. So they still showed up and swing around a little bit. Um, there's gotta be one. Oh, shirt, shirtless man for sure. It's it's Texas. Shirtless man always is, is at these shows. As long oh. as you have those guys, then you're you're set for like a really really good show. So we're halfway there right now. If you're halfway there right now. Of course, you will get shirtless guy there easily. I mean, pretty much every single show, no matter what it is, you can get a pick going. There's going to be some guy jumping in, no shirt, having a great time, and usually it's one it's one of two guys. It's either a guy that's you know pretty you know. Rather built, but also fat, but he's very immobile, just going shirtless, just having fun. Or like the dudes that have been like, you know, they live in the gym 10 hours a day and just like, they walk sideways and it's just like, this is what we came for. See, I, I see it. I see it as the guy who only does, only does arms, never <laughs> missed chest and arms day, but has never been on, on an elliptical. That's my guy. Like it's, he's, do- he's jacked, but he's also carrying a weight. Like I, I love that dude. That's, that's who I strive to be. I want to be arms lay arms day only, man. You you want you want to be the bro out there, just looking all big there, and then you look down the legs, and they're itty, 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 just like <laughs> <laughs> toothpicks. <laughs> just, yeah, those guys are hysterical though, because every time I see those guys when I'm in the pit, it's just like you know you don't want to injure anybody, but there's some people like the big tough guys that are just all arms, all chest, no legs. They're trying to push people around. My thought process, just with enough momentum. Those guys will fall down based off of like no leg muscle whatsoever, and every just single time, give a little time, love tap to the knee, just a little yeah. right, right behind, just a little, little tap. 
No, I won't go for them. I'll, I'll go shoulder to shoulder and try and pop them up. And usually it's like, I'll get them and I'm just like, yeah, okay. I'm helping you back up because that's the rule. We all know the rule. You get knocked down. I'm helping you back up because, well, no one's getting hurt here on our watch. There you go. See, that that's that's healthy. You're the healthy pick guy. I like this. Oh, absolutely. I've been, I mean, I've been in so many of them in so many random different instances. The Hawaiian shirt still might be one of my favorite things of all time, just like going out there because I was there for uh, Welcome to Rockville this past year. And like one, the last day, the group that I was with, the four of us, uh, one, the, the girl that we were with, she, my friend Erica, she decided we should all do Hawaiian shirts one day. So we did it on the Sunday and it was hysterical being the pit for spirit box. And I was just like, I don't know about this guy. Like the Hawaiian shirt guy, either he's going to be the guy that's going to get like knocked over every time, or he's going to be the guy that you're just not going to expect. Just like go crazy. Leading the way. Definitely was option two. And then when I showed up later to see the who, it was just like, I was like, Hey, it's that guy. Went over okay, are you the, the are you the thing. button are you the buttoned all the way up guy or are you the the little bit of a little bit of the chest hair guy? Oh, t- today for the podcast, I've got it buttoned up, but this one's kind of tight, so I will literally have like two buttons buttoned, and then that's it, <laughs> just to go. make sure the shirt doesn't rip completely. Yes. All right, we're on board. I like that. No, oh, yeah. Plus, then you get you know you get the airflow, you get the chest hair hanging out of there, and you just you get that feeling of like you know you could easily be just relaxing on that beach right now. Just chilling, just having a good time, probably listening to some like Jimmy Buffett, or you could be the guy that's ready to go absolutely nuts and you need that airflow just for air circulation to keep yourself cool and and make sure you don't overheat. Sandbox core. All right. (laughs) We we might have just created a new shot. If someone does a hardcore version of Jimmy Buffett, sandbox core. There we go. There we go. Margarita riff. Oh, (laughs) oh, hang on. A margarita, uh, Margaritaville cover. Okay, we're on to something. Okay. All right. We are on to something. I mean, dude, Ty, you might want to write that down because if you guys do a heavier cover of Margaritaville, you there might be something there with a couple of different things. One, uh, you got just the fact that you got all the parrot heads, and I'd be like, what the heck is this? And there's a lot of them out there, so they're going to come check out the band. Two, hello, if we're going to see some where we can mosh to Margaritaville, you want to know how many people are going to be? You're going to be all of a sudden just like brought in a riot fest out of nowhere up here, up in uh, Chicago because if we can do a wall of death to the YMCA, we can do a wall of death to Margaritaville if you guys are covering it. <laughs> if, you're, if you're sponsoring Punk Goes Parrot, I'm in. We'll be the first band on the list, I promise. Well, I mean, that might be my next year venture. This year, my venture was sponsoring the When We Were Hungry Festival. Next year, I'm going to create a whole entire album that's going to sponsor it and have to probably pay for it. It's going to become, you know, like you said, Punk Goes Parrot. It's just a bunch of there bands you go. covering Jimmy Buffett song. And you guys get Margaritaville because we came up with it right now. <laughs> right. I, trademark it. Put it down. It's ours. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, both write that down. I'm gonna have to go online and like start like, you know, taking, you know, out just like trademarks and like uh uh pads on just you know punk ghost pair and hope for the best. We'll see what happens though. I might get some blowback from the Jimmy Buffett team, but we'll see what happens. I mean, y- y- what's wrong with bringing Jimmy Buffett to a heavier audience the way that we like to do it? As long as he gets royalties on his on his uh his Hawaiian shirt merch that we sell, he won't care. <laughs> I don't think he will, but I mean, could you just imagine just you guys going up on stage playing Margaritaville and covered by you guys self and then just seeing people go absolutely ape crazy in the pit. The amount of Hawaiian shirt guys like me, along with Dinosaur Man, and of course, crop top guy and shirtless guy. It's going to be just one wild pit you're not going to want to miss out on. So we used to actually, well, we, we still do. Every once in a while, we, we print off this merch where we just go to thrift stores and uh, we just buy up like stuff that we would wear uh with brand names on it and everything and we just print like over top of stuff you know like it, we literally have like the champion logo and then it'll just, we'll just like throw our raindrop logo like right over top of it so we did uh like button ups just like regular hawaiian shirts that just had our logo all the way across so i think you're on to something i like i think we're gonna just start opening up a line of just like lays and hawaiian shirts just with our logo plastered all over it and uh, I, yeah, I think I think we're going to be opening up to it. I mean, you'll be seeing us playing in, on, a, on an island in Brazil within the year. I th- See, look, this is productive. This is why I do these podcasts. It's not it's not about trying to promote the album. It's trying to trying to build a brand and come up with content ideas. I like this we're, we're, with- content, content, baby. Coming up with content <laughs> ideas, of course, promoting the music as well, but also getting people to know you and the band. And all of a sudden, it's th- that's some of the best podcasts that I've had where all of a sudden we just talk about random stuff. People get to know the band 
on more yeah. of a personal level. You just get to see kind of how their mind works. You get to know more and you get to have more fun with them. That was one thing I saw when I got to interview Benny from the band Avoid like early in 2021. Cause it's just like, I've seen some of their crazy stuff. I got to, you know, interview <coughs> like this dude is absolutely hysterical. And then watching them from, you know, January 2020 when I first got to interview him till now where all of a sudden it's just like, they're just going absolutely crazy. And their content is just ungodly hilarious. It's, I love being able to introduce people to those kind of people in that sort of a way where it's like, you know, you see this stuff and you get a feeling that you knew where it was coming from because you already had a little bit of that insight into the artist's <coughs> mind just from, you know, a crazy conversation where now all of a sudden you guys are going to have sinking Hawaiian shirts with your logo right across it, selling them at uh, all the shows, some online. I mean, you're going to end up going to a show and half the people are going to be wearing Hawaiian shirts with your logo on it because who the hell else is doing that right now? <laughs> hey, I will say too, a really cool thing that's going on right now with some bands that are blowing up, like like Avoid, for example. Uh, we've gotten to know those guys a little bit. And like, how cool is it that we're in a spot right now where there are bands like that that are blowing up with a very, very genuine brand of exactly who they are. Like, th those guys are 100% their brand. Like, it, there's no facade. There's no... I, I'm sure that they obviously plan, but like, at the same token, it's not planned. Like, like they're literally just selling how freaking wild they actually are. They're brilliant dudes, but they're complete and utter goofballs. And like for a band that that has that kind of style, just these very intense riffs, just constantly very in your face band, and then they're just like the best nut jobs ever <laughs> off off stage. Like that's that's the business model is just being goofballs. And I love that. Like they're, I was actually in Vegas at the NASCAR race when their national anthem went viral. Are you serious? Uh, yeah, yeah. We were there with them hanging out, and like, I've never seen, I've never seen guys instantly and so brilliantly jump on something that could have been really bad, and made it the most marketable, ingenious. We're going to lean into this and double down on it thing. Like uh, just literally just afterwards, they're just coming up, coming up to the stands and being like, well, uh, this one's going to get wild. Let's just roll with it. And they did. And they took a moment like that and somehow turned it into making it the most brilliant, just 24 hours of complete growth. It was so smart. I like, I learned so much from those guys in 48 hours in Vegas that, that weekend. It was awesome. That just blows my mind completely that you were actually at that race. I remember when that yeah. was happening. I saw like I, I didn't get to watch the race, but I ended up seeing like Benny's national anthem. I thought, well, that could have gone better. <laughs> That's all I see. <laughs> but then watching what happened the next couple of days, seeing how they were leaning into it, seeing NASCAR Twitter just like go off on them, and then them responding, not with like, you know, not responding like Chris Taylor Brown from Trap just like talking about Pandora numbers. No, they were just having so much fun with it. Once yeah. Jim Rome picked it up on his podcast, it was just lambasting the band. And then the next like segment that he did, he actually listened to their music and liked it. All of a sudden I see on Twitter from Benny, what if I just call into the show and see what happens? Are you kidding me? Call in. Like that's an incredible move really? right there. Does it's in a help like you can go online and like look it up. It's like just look up Jim Rome Avoid. Someone put a super gut together of all three segments and just Benny on the pocket. Jim Rome is just losing his mind the whole entire time because of just how hysterical this is. <coughs> but that is a great thing you just to like take from a band like that where you know you're seeing their genuine selves just all over the place in the content they make and how they present themselves and what they do. And when they go on stage, it's they take that goofball energy and put it there with some of these heavy riffs at the same time as well. I mean, hell on their last tour with fit for a King during what, a couple of their shows and everything they could have like a video backdrop. Their merch guy was playing Fortnite, and that was yeah. the backdrop. Like who thinks of that shit? <laughs> and then having a, the QR code is the backdrop. Whenever, whenever they're not playing, uh, whenever they're not playing, it was literally just, it was just like, avoid kicks ass and then just the QR code to their socials, right? That's yeah. brilliant. I love it. I love that we're in that space now where bands can do that and it's working and it's so self-sufficient and like they're not relying on anybody to get that done. I love that. I love that attitude so much. I love that attitude too, but it does also take like, it takes what the, uh, the personalities of the band and the energy behind the band to drive something like that because 
there are bands where you know if they were to do something like that if they're not bringing that energy and they're not having that crazy connection with the fans like you know during a show or all of a sudden just having that connection on their socials then stuff like that is not going to work out as effectively now if you're just going to create that core sort of environment that people are drawn to that energy that people want to be a part of then you know bands are doing stuff like that and it's just you know people see that on like i'm just going to say this because i went to the show and uh that Fit for a King show with Void. It was in Belvedere, Illinois, literally right outside of Rockford. Walked in, and all of a sudden, they got going. Me and two other people started moshing. It was just the three of us. <coughs> I ended up being <coughs> friends with those two guys. Like, after some, I've seen a couple other shows of them as well. But, like, no one else really knew a Void but, like, the three of us and then two of my friends that were in, like, that were in the front. By the end of the show, when they played Song About James for the breakdown, the whole entire crowd was split for the wall of death. Not just a couple of us, the whole entire crowd. Like yeah. if you're able to draw that kind of fun and energy and have people respond to you in that way, then all of a sudden they're going to see, you know, they're going to want to connect with you on social media. They're going to want to connect with your music and they're going to see everything that comes out of there. And it's like creating this whole entire lore just behind your own band. That's drawing people in. Right. Yeah. I like, so Something that's funny that we talk about all the time as a band is um, b- bands, for example, in our spot where we're now starting to get some bigger tours where you're in this like <clears throat> one, two, three spot on a four or five band bill. Most of those people are not going to know who you are. And it's easy to get down on yourself real fast on stage where like in the first 30 seconds, you're not getting anything from them. Right. But like we've learned to have so much fun with that. Like I'm a very competitive person. I grew up an athlete and like one of the things I missed when I like, jumped into the music field was like not having the kind of competitive drive that I had growing up. And like, for me, that's my competition, right? Like I love going up on stage to a crowd who might not know who we are exactly, or they, they only know ghost or as our big song. Like they, you know, they don't really know really what sinking is about in terms of a live performance. And my competition and how I fulfill that, that part of my heart that just loves that drive is I'm going to go up there and I got 25 minutes and it's my game to try and win you over by the end of the 25 minutes. And sometimes I literally say that, like, we'll finish up a first song and like, if a crowd's not a hundred percent into it yet, you saw a little bit of movement, but like you know, people are unsure. I will literally say like, all right, we're started now. We're getting a little loose, work it out a little bit, stretch the arms. By the end of this, we're going to have some fun together. I promise. Are we going to do that? All right. And the competition is, can you get those people to 100% buy into what you're doing within 25 minutes? And I love that. I like that. I get so much personal fulfillment from that, like having that competition every single night. I'm going to win you over and you're going to see it. And like, there's, there's nothing more fulfilling than afterwards at a merch table, somebody coming up and being like, I never heard of you once. But somehow, 25 minutes into this, I was going absolutely bananas. And like, I, that's, that's, just, that's my favorite, favorite thing about being in the position that we're in right now as a band. Well, just kind of connecting it to that whole entire competitive nature because there's a lot of times when it comes to the music scene as well, you know, where bands are seeing them trying to compete with each other. But when one band does well, it allows a lot of other people to get into these other bands. So that's now where the competition part lies. And that's why I love what you said where your competition, you know, that, that drive that's in you, you found a way to really work within that. But instead of focusing on trying to be better than the other bands, it's you're trying to win that crowd over. You're trying to change the crowd from <coughs> maybe being a little more stagnant, a little more, you know, uptight because they're not sure you are to loose having a good time. And if you're able to do something like that, which it seems like you are absolutely killing every step of the way, when those people come to the merch table and talk to you afterwards and create that connection, now they're going to go home, but there's always going to be that positive reaction to sink in no matter what, whatever they hear someone talk about your band, whenever they see anything with your band pop on pop up on socials, the first thing they think about is the positive energy and the positive emotions that they had all based off of what happened at the live show that you created for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> you know, I, I, there's nothing, for a band trying to grow, no matter what happens with social media growth, there's nothing more impactful than, than the most grassroots form of promotion and growth. You know, um, like we had, I'm so thankful for the kind of fans that we had where we had people with sink in tattoos before we had 2000 followers on Instagram, you know, and, and that's, 
there's there's going to be more long term growth as a band from people who are that way, who are so bought into what you are doing and, and who you are as people. Uh, than any amount of followers like the followers will come if those people are committed and as long as you keep providing the content that that growth will come too and um it, it's cool I, i'm so thankful that i'm with a group of guys that have that very diy aspect of like we're just going to figure it out and we're going to slug it out and like if people come on board to help us beautiful but if not like we're going to put it in your face that's for sure they, like that our competition is is just growing and it's cool that we're in a field where like, again, like you said, the competition is not with other bands. Like, you know, uh, with, with the tide rising, all, all the boats are rising, that whole metaphor, you know, if we're, if we're with, if we're with our buddies who are in bands that are growing as well, we're all going to be able to support one another and just keep on, keep on. There's so much space to claim in this industry. Uh, there's so, there's so much capacity venues all around the world. There's, there's, there's playlisting everywhere. There is room and we can all grow if we like, we all show up with that, that DIY mentality. Like we're going to turn some heads today, today together. Let's do it. I love that. Absolutely. And like, you even take a look at the scene right now. And I think a great example of that is look at something that like bring me the horizon has been doing over the past 10 years. I mean, go all the way back 2006, 2008, where it's, you know, there's no clean vocals in anything that they do. Then you get to Sep Eternal, which has that metal course. And now they're bringing, you know, you had That's the Spirit, Amo, Postman's Rebel Horror, the collaboration with Ed Sheeran. It's they're doing so many different things, but it's bringing them into more of this you know, popular kind of perception within pop culture, but based off of all the music they've created from the past and they haven't really lost touch with some of that, you know, heavier stuff, especially with Ali Sykes' vocal range, you're seeing a lot more people start to drift into more of that <coughs> rock and metal world. Seeing a lot more people start to like bands like Motionless and White, like Ice Nine Kills, I'm, um, I'll throw Falling in Reverse in there as well. There's so many more people are Beartooth even gravitating towards these bands. And a lot of it might be just because, there's starting to be a little bit more of this, you know, you're seeing the success of some of these other bands, specifically I'm going to use Bring Me the Horizon in more of a popular sense. And you're seeing a lot of these other bands, especially more of a rock and metal sense, start to rise up with it because now because of Bring Me the Horizon and seeing how pop culture is reacting to them, you're seeing more people get exposed to that sound and more exposure to the overall bands that are around that sound. And then, you know, all of a sudden they start coming up as well. Bands around there start coming up as just like a residual effect. It's like you said, one band rise the tide. Oh, wait, everyone's on the same, you know, on the same lake. So the tide's going to rise one place. It's going to rise the same place. So let's just keep it going up, 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 up. All right. Let's make some people upset. What's your favorite Bring Me the Horizon record? Um, Semper Eternal. Okay. <clears throat> I would say Semper Eternal is probably the, oh, is the most important record. My favorite thing from them, Deep Cut, the live album from Royal Albert Hall. Ooh. Have you ever listened to that? Yeah, I have. <clears throat> that, that, that style of music with a choir and <clears throat> excuse me, and an orchestra is unbeatable. It this that touches a, a, a nerve in me that I, I could listen to that all day long and it will never ever get old. Ever. I'll say, see, even you saying that, I'm listening to that, like, because I do like bringing the horizon a good deal. I'm just like, I can't even be mad at that because you're absolutely correct on that. <laughs> when you listen to a, a band bring forward more of that, like, orchestral style and that chorus style behind them, and it could be with, you know, just them redoing some of their original songs, but just adding that piece to it. With having that orchestral and chorus background, any style of music, any fan of any style of music, whether it's, you know, hip hop and rap, country, pop music, any else within rock and metal, EDM, whatever it is, there is always some sort of connection to that orchestral and like more uh, like chorus kind of backing style where you put something like that together. There's going to be some sort of heavy emotional connection that everyone's going to have. I mean, when it comes to my favorite band, uh, my favorite band is Rise Against and they released their Ghost Note Symphonies album in 2018. It's like they reimagined all those songs in more of an acoustic version, but they added more of this orchestral feel to it. A lot more strings behind as well with violins, some more, you know, bigger drums as well. And I just listen, I'm just like, well, these songs feel this, like they, they sound different. They feel the same in terms of the meaning, but they hit you in such a different way. It's just like, shit, honestly, if, if more bands did that, not as like a, a consistent thing, but it's like, oh yeah, bring this in, you know, maybe here and there. 
that's just going to help connect on so many other levels and also bring this grander feel to your music overall. I mean, listen to the, uh, I think it's the theatrical or cinematic version of Eternally Yours by Motionless and White. It changes the song's emotion completely, but it just works out so damn well. It's like, instead of just being this heavier love song, now it's a song that people could potentially be doing their wedding dances to with the first, for the first time with their partner. Right, right. <coughs> you know, something that I really like that we've been trying to do is the, every band every band and their mother has done the acoustic uh, EP post the album, just the acoustic versions. I, I love that there's a trend of bands doing like the reimagined instead. Leaning, <coughs> leaning into like, hold on one second. <coughs> there we go. There we Man. go. Hey, Texas allergies are driving me nuts. <laughs> <coughs> but um, I love that. Like, I, I but when bands go and, and take a stab at doing like a hip hop version or like these versions that have like sax all of a sudden and all these, like, we're we're trying to do a remake of the record that's going to be coming out here shortly. Where, like, instead of working just a, acoustics and like dumbed down versions, uh, we're we're hiring, we're bringing in like hip hop DJs and rappers and like uh, like jazz musicians and and the completely different genres. Where like I don't want to just do another ag- acoustic rendition. Like I I want the the fully saxophone version of our heaviest song and just see what happens. Um, we got some buddies who are in pretty big bands down in, in Mexico who are doing like Spanish versions of our songs for that record where like, I just sing the chorus and then they do Spanish verses. Like I, I want to just have fun with it. For, for, forget these, these basic trends of just doing the acoustic remix. Like let's, let's do something weird. I can't wait until we have bones Spanish edition. That will be so fun. You're, I mean, you're just blowing my mind with some of this because you're absolutely correct on that too. When you, just, you know, I do enjoy when bands do that acoustic stuff as well, but when you do a reimagining of it, well, even if you use the acoustic stuff, go more orchestral, change up the way some of the vocal patterns are, change the way some of the feelings are all throughout the album, or you employ different styles. Even if you just do it like an EP, or I've seen bands even do it in a live setting as well, where you haven't even heard this stuff, but they're like, you know what's going to be fu- more, even more fun? What if we take our songs? And we make them heavier on the live setting. You're, if you want, yeah. if you want, if you want, them, you know the way that you like them. The album's there for you. But we're gonna try and create another experience for you. Because I saw that with the band Casket, so over from the UK. I saw with the band Varsity well, within the past two months. Both their live shows, it was they were their live shows were heavier than I expected, heavier than the album. But I loved every step of the way they went about it because, again, you're instead of giving people, you know, <coughs> okay, you expect this. Give them something that they're not expecting, but give them something that's going to blow their fucking minds. Yeah, absolutely. Um, bands like that, cool. Like the Caskets and Varsity, for example, the they're able to pull it off just because their their writing is in such a unique spot where, like, their vocalists are so talented, but the 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 instrumentation is from a very very uh, aggressive standpoint. So it gives them so much leeway to really do whatever they want to live. And I, I, I love that. And there's so many, a lot of British bands do that too. So I, I love British, uh, like the whole British scene over like the past 10 years. Some of my favorite bands are like Mallory Knox and Don Broco and Lower Than Atlantis. And all those bands are able to pull that off where it is, it, it is, it is mayhem live, but because they have truly, truly talented singers, they're still able to pull out true songwriting on records. Um, I think I mean, that's, that that world is really where we pull a lot of our sound from. Yeah, I, I I always view I always view the the British scene right now as being kind of like three or four years ahead of wherever the American scene goes. Uh, I, I think like in terms in terms of defining sound, I always think they are whatever is happening right now in the UK is three years ahead of what's about to happen in the US. I, I have to agree with you on that as well. Taking a look at some of the other things that happened, take a look at what Architects released the Holy Hell album in Doomsday. How many people took so much inspiration from every, that singular every single Every single singing-ish metalcore band wrote that same riff two years afterwards. And like, <laughs> and not in a negative. It's incredible. Like I love that that defined a genre for the next four years. But like, 
they were they were defining the sound that we picked up over here and recorded over the year process took a year to release it and two years later we were all doing the same thing and yeah, so exactly. it, i what they're doing yeah. what those bands are doing is just so far above and beyond and and i love it i love it so much yeah because you want to see a great example of that because doomsday i think the single might have come out like in later 2017 and then in 2019 <laughs> one of the first singles off of wage wars pressure album was low and literally the opening riff it's like that is a doomsday inspired riff right there yes, my is. friend you can't tell me otherwise absolutely absolutely and hey more power to them it's that, that's not a negative like it's, it's another great song i don't i don't absolutely. bash that at all but uh they are definitely they're definitely leading the way and we're following suit we're grabbing the coattails yeah, but honestly, like there, there's a, when it comes to other genres of music, I mean, the American scene might be leading the way, but when it comes to the the UK scene, leading the way more like the rock and metal side. Again, I'm not, I'm not gonna say this. I'm not mad about it, just because look at the incredible things yeah. that are coming out of it, and look at the incredible influence that it's having over on all these other bands, not only over here in, in the United States, but also all around the world in Australia, in Japan. In, in South, everywhere. I'm seeing so much great music. I'm hearing so much great music come out <coughs> and seeing some of the things that these British bands are doing to lead that way. I mean, whoever's doing something that's incredibly cool and awesome, let's just see where it goes. Let's not stunt any growth. Though. Let's just keep it rolling because who knows what that's going to influence someone over here in the United States to do, Who what's going to influence you guys to do with Sink In, and then what's going to come out of that. All of a sudden, you guys might create something new from an influence off of that, and then people will <coughs> start taking influence off of that thing that you created. It's just this yeah. constant cycle of, let's just keep this rolling. Like, who cares who's you know ahead of whoever else? Let's just keep it rolling because it's going to be for a positive where – we're going to find out new things. We're going to find new, we're going to find new patterns and let's just roll with them. And because the more better music we have out there, the better. The, the only put, the only pushback I would ever give to that is something that I think we need to do a better job, a uh, job of in the uh, American scene is there are bands who are pushing boundaries farther in the UK who are able to receive more widely known attention and financial support from labels and then from the business side of things than I think the bands that are willing to really push the boundaries here. So let me give you an example. One of my favorite bands of all time is Enter Shikari. Okay. Enter Shikari is a damn near a full blown arena act overseas. And in the U S they're just now starting to break into like 500 to 600 cap rooms. And they are, obviously, if you know anything about them, their, their genre spans, it's all over the place. But they are able to land these kind of these mainstream tours almost and these mainstream festivals in the UK where it, it was able to, they were just able to find so many more people. Like it wasn't just confined to a niche market. They were being thrown to the masses immediately. And a band like that would never be allowed to play, uh, I, you know, name a festival in, in the US a bamboozle right like that's never going to be a, a a thing in the u.s with with how our markets are set up right now and i really wish the bands that were really to, willing to push the boundaries as much as a band like enter shikari does i wish that on the business side of things they were given an opportunity in the u.s because i think that would expand where we go with our genres and how how we write our music like ima imagine like truly think about that Imagine if a band like Enter Shikari was, was, was born and bred in the States and defining how we wrote music in our scene here. Like, who knows where we would be and how, how much more defined and creative we could get. But, like, right now, in order to break that wall to be an arena band in the, in the States, you, there is a, a bit of a cookie-cutter mold that you have to mildly fit into for the most part. All right, I want to I want to jump into this a little bit further now because I've got a couple other ideas around there where I totally understand where you're coming from, but and like even a band that I was thinking about that has something similar like that where it's maybe not in that same level of you know that drastic level, but a band like Alter Bridge, they're playing massive arena shows over in over in Europe, but all of a sudden in the in the United States, when I got to see them before the pandemic shut down everything in 2020, they played a thousand cap room. Now, yeah. and then on the flip side, I mean, look at someone like Shinedown. Shinedown, I saw him play that same venue, but it was a 5,000 cap room above it, which is, you know, Shinedown's still fan. And Shine, Shinedown's headlining festivals here. They go over to Europe, and it's like flip-flop with them and Alter Bridge. That's just, you know, maybe some of the ways, you know, things could be. That's just kind of a little cool tidbit. But that's where my mind came with that was, we were talking about Enter Shikari was, 
Is it something where, you know, with them not getting that push, is it something because maybe labels aren't as, you know, behind them? Or where I think it might be when it comes to U.S. bands where the U.S. market, especially for a popular music side, when it comes to more of those rock and metal bands, they kind of, the ones that are being pushed that are having more of that, you know, breakthrough style, there is some sort of that cookie cutterness to them. But is that because that's what's expected and that's what the popular audience is? want especially since the fact that you know when it comes to like a massive arena like bands that could sell out arenas or like playing arenas for like rock and metal right now i could name like in the united states since that have come out since the year like 2000 i could probably name five and that's it maybe now we're just brainstorming this isn't an opinion that i have i'm just just thinking out loud oh absolutely go maybe 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 the labels majority of labels in the states that 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 work with bands in our style maybe there just aren't enough chances taken yet here so for example like think again bringing up bring me the horizon Uh, even in the sempaternal era that's not like really radio rock but since sempaternal you know, they, they've been getting major label funding that pushed to Radio Rock that brought them, you know, to the stratosphere. But like, think, think about it. Like, even the singles that they have now, it's not really Radio Rock. They're still very much a, like a, it's a, still a warped tour band. But they needed, they needed the major label funding and somebody to really take a big chance at them in order for that to, to re- really reach the stratosphere. And I think if more, if more labels took that chance, uh, on some of these bands that are really pushing boundaries instead of making the safe decision when it comes to signings, I, I think we could experience that, that here. Now, the other thing too, that, that I think is really important overseas that we don't have is because Warp Tour was so uh, genre defining in terms of like everybody that's in the alt world plays Warp Tour. Uh, we didn't, we haven't really had these festivals like they have in the UK where you can go see the weekend and Metallica and Bring Me the Horizon and Enter Shikari on the same bill. Uh, we've never had that before. And now I think there is space now in the States with, with being a few years past Warp Tour where some of the lineups are starting to turn that way. Um, like, for example, how sick is it that Turnstile was able to play Coachella? Or even you to know? jump on top like, of that too, how sick is it that Lorna Shore is playing Lollapalooza this year? Right, right. I think if that starts to happen more often, now we can have this conversation five years from now and things are getting a little bit different. I mean, Turnstile is really, really getting close to being like a radio band. How crazy is that? Who would have thought that back in 2008 when I was seeing them that this is hardcore in Philadelphia? You know? No, no one would have thought that. But then again, like say <clears throat> Bring Me the Horizon. Who would have thought that Bring Me the Horizon would be, you know, having a lot of songs on the radio. I mean, even take a look at what happened to the Posthumous Survival Horror EP. I thought Parasite Eve was like, it felt almost similar to me in terms of like just sound motion is how it hit me. Same like Can You Feel My Heart, which was, you know, seven years older yeah. in 2013. But all of a sudden that song is one that gets picked up all over the freaking radio. It's a, um, <coughs> okay, I, you know, again, I love the point that you just made too because – you see a lot of those, like, and not only that with like festivals overseas too, especially the ones in, in like the UK and in Europe, a lot of those big giant festivals are rock and metal based, uh, download rock and ring rock and park. I know I'm probably missing a couple others here, here in the U S when you get to those like major festivals that people think about, you know, like, uh, like Coachella, like Lollapalooza, it's, we're not, it's, we might be seeing some of those like <coughs> band acts there, but it's either bands that have been way, way, way established way back when, like Metallica, or bands that are very established and have more of that kind of sound that is for you, like the Foo Fighters. But yeah. again, Turnstile at Coachella, Lord Ashore at freaking Lollapalooza. I can't wait to hear the stories of, you know, kids walking around and like trying to find something, trying to find, you know, some EDM artists they want to go see. <coughs> and they walk past Lorna Shore and hear Will Ramos do the pig squeal. Yeah. And hey, I will say this. If you're listening to this right now, listen closely. If you're listening to this and you're one of those people that was bashing a band like Lorna Shore for playing that festival, I want all of my favorite bands to be able to pay their bills. Let's get over this thing of bashing success or pursuing success. Like, 
there's still this kind of this toxic vibe uh, in our world of like, we want to hold these artists like our own, that it's this private little thing that yes, it was special to you and you want to keep that special to you. But like, I want more people to experience what helped me so much as a kid. I want more people to experience the music that I value so greatly in my everyday life. I want more people to be able to make that music that can actually pay their bills so we can get more creative and focus on the music. So please, for the love of God, don't be that person person that's bashing a Lorna Shore or a turnstile for playing Jimmy Kimmel. Cause I see that still and it drives me nuts. I like, I want turnstile to be able to make their car payment this month. You should too. That's my PSA for the day. <laughs> that P- honestly, I'm playing this right now. That PSA is turning into a TikTok short that I'm making to promote this episode because that's something that's got it. That's something that's got to be said because that also goes at like that gatekeeping mentality. But this is even further gatekeeping, not just like gatekeeping within the genre itself. But it's like there's there are people that just like oh they get they want you want to keep it special to you because you had been supported for so long. I totally understand that. Don't get me wrong. But as those bands continue to grow and start to break through in other elements, like Turnstile, like Lorna Shore is right now, like a band like Ice Nine Kills is, you know, if, yeah. if, if, if you're not into the new stuff that they're doing, you know, that's fine. I get it. It's your choice. It's your opinion. That's fine. But just let it, let it happen. Let p- more people get into it. Cause the more people get into it, like you said, those bands are able to make their payments Their bands are able to pay their bills. Their bands are able to be more financially free to be as creative as they want. And the <laughs> influence from those bands being in more of a popular scene, being more well-known is going to just influence a lot of other kids to just start to potentially pick up a guitar, pick up some drumsticks, try and sing form a garage band and try some things out that, you know, maybe they're influenced by. And next thing you know, that band could all of a sudden, you know, be, you know, like on the level that the Foo Fighters are. Again, that's kind of a far-fetched idea, but it's not a far-fetched idea because it has happened before. So why would we want to happen? And it will, it will happen again, you know, and, and Hey, the more Foo Fighters, the better for for the metaphor, you know, like I, I, this, again, the competition isn't from band to band or protected, the competition isn't like protecting the things that you value from other people. The competition is, if you care about the music that you listen to, how are we gonna impact the world in a broader scale? And let's figure it out and let's do it. Absolutely. Um, and and it, it, start, it's, it starts with bands like that, that's for sure. Yeah, because one thing you did say too, is like you want people to experience that feeling that you got from music that you experienced, you know, <coughs> back when you were a kid, growing up as a teacher, but also today as well. I want the same. I want people to experience the feeling that I got. Like I always get whenever I go see Rise Against play live. I want them to experience this feel of nothing else in the world matters, and this insane amount of energy comes over you, where you feel like nothing is gonna stop you, and you're just having the time. I want to have people feel like how I felt like when I saw uh, We Came as Romans at welcome to rockville and we were moshing in the rain after i had just been exhausted the whole day from the heat and almost passed out from heat the heat four times i yeah. it just it was just like this this like a feeling of you know i've had such just an incredibly just rough day to this point but with the 20 minutes i got for that set before they had to cancel because the thunderstorms were rolling in the 20 minutes from that is something i will never forget and the positive just energy and just happiness i felt in those 20 minutes I don't want, I'm never going to forget. And I want people to feel the exact same thing or have the chance to feel the exact same thing, no matter what kind of music they're into or no matter what they want to listen to, just to get that kind of experience and just to feel just that sheer passion that's behind it. Yeah. Wow. This is, this is healthy. This is real healthy. (laughs) This is, this is a therapy session for musicians right here. I like this. (laughs) <laughs> honestly like i said at the beginning like before we even started like i don't know where this podcast is going to go but literally this is just absolutely fantastic because not only pot like therapy for musicians but therapy for the music lover i mean myself when it comes to trying to play music i haven't tried to anything since i was like 14 when i used to try and was uh i was trying to drum but then all of a sudden yeah that kind of went by the wayside now i just love going to concerts and i love throwing myself into people having a blast in the mosh pit and just enjoying life and also all the other people that listen to music as well it's just therapy just to talk about this stuff and just to bring it to light, just to open up about what's going on in the scene right now. And just like being open to all these new bands that are coming around, being open to all these different experiences that are happening and being open to all these different bands that are potentially starting to break through the popular side of things and just seeing how far that can take not only those bands, 
but also the entire scene around it as well. Let's just let this thing continue to grow because we all want rock and metal music to be the popular genre in in the United States again, like it was back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, even grunge in the 90s as well. We want, and even like the pop punk style in the 2000s. We want to have something like that happen again. We want to be the ones on top once again. Best way we can do it is by doing it together and supporting each other because, like you said, as that tide rises for one band, we're all on the same, we're on the same like ocean, lake, whatever. That tide's gonna rise for everybody. Do you have like a who's next up list, or like you know your your like top five of of who's gonna be it five years from now? I oh, I um so. <laughs> Pressure's I, on now. Pressure's on now. Um, even though there's like they're kind of like really be like taking for that now, but three that I think are going to be like who's next in terms of potentially you know I would say headlining festivals are really moving up. One especially that I think they're doing now, Motionless and White. Yeah. Even though they're really consistent with it, Motionless and White is definitely one of those bands to watch out for. It's, you know, for a popular side of things, even though we all know about them. Another one, Bad Omens. Absolutely it's dude the new record is crazy i'll say this i still prefer some of the heavier stuff especially off the original but when i listen to death of peace of mind i'm like this is what if if bring the horizon did this for amo this is what i would have wanted amo to be so that's how i kind of look at it but i'm i can't bash anything for bands seeing how many people are starting to get into them seeing what they're picking up right now and seeing all the notoriety again keep this shit rolling keep it going dude they are they are if the weekend grabbed a guitar and hit a distortion pedal Exactly. In like the best way possible. Yeah. Like in terms of songwriting, that's what it is. Number three, um, based off of their massive success last year and just seeing what they can do with it, Spirit Box. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They are. There's. I'm trying to think of a band that has had that much upside in our scene over like the past 10 years. And I, in terms of like how quickly that upside grew, I, I really don't think there's anybody else. I mean, can you think of anybody? I mean, other than obviously the the, the Bring Me the Horizon meteoric yeah. rise, like I, the the potential that is in that band to be so mainstream but still maintain uh, a a a sound that we love, like it, it's the perfect potion for doing that. It's really cool to see. Oh, absolutely. Um, let me think. I got I got two more. Right, I got two more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's go number four. We're gonna go with the Warning out of Mexico. Okay. Three, I'm not really familiar with them too much. Um, three sisters, it's three sisters and they play more of like a hard rock style, but seeing okay. what they're doing with it and seeing just how many people are really picking up on it. It's somewhere they, that, uh, after the, it was, they started out with like an enter Sandman cover that got them really picked up by a lot of just people. <laughs> okay. years, and, and then they played welcome to Rockville last year. It was like their one of their first shows after the pandemic and stuff. And this year alone, they've already gone on their own little headlining run um then they're going on tour with i believe it's hailstorm and the pretty reckless and then wow. later in the year i think I'm, i know hailstorm is doing it again i think it's hailstorm them in new year's day so it's hailstorm pretty reckless the warnings the warnings the th- uh, three of three but then when the hailstorm goes out later in the year it's hailstorm the warning new year's day so the warning gets moved up even further and plus if you're gonna go out with lizzie hale and hailstorm you know that's gonna end up drawing at least two thousand people a night absolutely absolutely now I got to I got to come up with one more. Pressure's on for 5. Pressure's like, on. I had, give me give me a deep cut. A deep cut. Um oh god, who do I want to go with? Um Okay, I got one. I go with the second band I ever interviewed on the podcast. They're from Texas. They're a band called Kingdom Collapse. When okay. I, when I first interviewed them, they had maybe like now this is June of 2019. They had like Spotify listener count maybe maybe 10,000. Okay. Since then, they have so now. Now, as I, if I would look at it right now, I if last time I checked it, their Spotify list account was just under two hundred thousand. They have released, wow. I think it's been like two or three songs since the pandemic. That's that's been it. I know they got a debut album still coming up, but they've gone on tours with. Um, they they played with they got a little mini tour with Red. They did a whole tour this year that I saw twice. It was them. Uh, they were fourth on the bill, but the headliner was from Ashes to Do. It was from Ashes to Do, Fire from the Gods, Blind Channel, and uh, then Kingdom Collapse. Then my friends in Above Snakes were the fifth band on the bill. Now they're going to be on tour with Attack Attack for over the summer and Adelita's Way. And it's just like somewhere more that hard rock alt metal scene. Kind of think like 
think like three days grace with Adam Gonzi. <laughs> like that's yeah. kind of like a, like a very, a banner. It's like a bigger banner. It's like, if you like that sound, go check this out. So that'd be one. Another one, because I just mentioned, so I'm going to go six blind channel out of Finland. Gotcha. Okay. So here's the deal. We're now obligated two years from now to revisit this. And we're going to give you a scorecard on how accurate you were. Pressure's okay. on. You're going to have to promote these bands like crazy to, to hold your name. Well, well, we'll put six. I'll put six up there. So it was most of the white bad omens, spirit box, uh, the warning can collapse in blind channel. Funny enough, out of those six, I've had three on the podcast so far. So there you go. I'm doing all right. It's been, it's been King Collapse, Blind Channel, and The Warning. Still hoping go. for the other three, but we'll see what happens. All right. Uh, I'm going to do my five real quick. Uh, I'm really, really hoping it – I'm truly, truly hoping it is sink in, sink in, sink in, sink in. And fifth one would be sink in. <laughs> Alrighty, well, we'll we'll revisit this in two years, and I'll give you the scorecard. But you're putting all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> However, you're putting all your eggs in your own basket, which is what I want you to do. Hey, hey, we're committed at this point. I think I have to. I'm obligated to. <laughs> Ab- absolutely, I want. Like, I was going more just, you know, you know, literally. I'm like, I'm taking this as literal as possible. I'm trying to give as as answer. Can. And you're like, no, I'm going for it myself. I, I'm putting all my eggs in the basket. Love- I'm promoting myself, and I fucking love it, man. I I loved how serious you took that because when I asked, I was like, he's either going to take this really seriously and give some really, really in-depth uh, content, which uh, it was really good. Or I just teed him up to just juice us up for the show tonight as much as possible. <laughs> and you took it so seriously. And I appreciate that for you being a good person instead of a suck up. I love it. <laughs> and then and then and then all of a sudden you go all like you know you go promote yourself and then I turn from going you know very serious with it to I'm just going straight hype man for it right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Oh, I mean that that's gonna be the the new the new intro for our set is gonna be me just on a, on a screen just saying sink in sink in sink in most likely sink in and then we just hit the first downbeat. <laughs> And just all of a sudden, just like, yeah! and then all of a sudden, yeah! that's, when you, that's when you see that crowd start to go like this. The middle just starts to open up, and all of a sudden, you're going to see the crop top guy and dinosaur man. I was just going to say, crop top guy appears, and it is like it powers him up, Yu Gi Oh style. <laughs> he, just, he pulled his card, he's ready for it. No, which, okay, here's exactly what we need we need dinosaur guy, we need crop top guy, we need shirtless guy, we need Janko jeans guy, and then we need Hawaiian shirt guy. Making me all five of us go in the middle, <laughs> they put our fists together, like, I have the power, and then, the, it. And then it drops, and then everyone crashes in, and then we just go ape shit. The Power Rangers assemble, <laughs> <laughs> the Power Watchers assemble. Oh, man. I really hope that that happens tonight. It's an outdoor show, too. So, uh, you know, it's going to be extra sweaty. It's going to be extra good. Oh, hey, yeah. Not, isn't it like a really band hot just started playing down there? It's not too loud, is it? Oh, no. I can't even hear him right now. So you're good. Okay, perfect. I was going to say, are you guys playing indoors or outdoors today? So the the fest the festival we're playing at today, there's there's two stages. There's an indoor stage, and then we, we are at the outdoor stage at the end of the night. Um, so it's going to be cooled off, which is not too bad. However, we played... We played in Austin last night, and our set time was 6.30 for the outdoor stage. And it was 105. We, we, we went up. So, like, we're a band that kind of values uh, having, like, a presentable image. You know, we got, our, we got our show clothes, our stage clothes. I went up in short shorts and, <laughs> and, and some Nikes, and I was, I, literally, I was like, fellas, I'm sorry, but you're catching uh, – planet fitness tie today on stage because uh that's the only way i'm going to be able to make it through this show so i i did a uh, sun sunny sunglasses uh, a, a black t-shirt and some short shorts with my with my runners and uh we uh we survived the onslaught of 106 degree heat honestly i don't think anyone is gonna look at you and be like oh they didn't look all <laughs> professional no you, look at exactly what you did you made sure that you were gonna play the show to the best of your ability given the circumstances of the weather on top of that Let's go back to something we started out this conversation with. Let's go back to the band of void in that situation. Don't you think they would have done something similar where it's like, you know, <laughs> instead of trying to put out this certain image with their show clothes and like having a fun, like they would have, they probably would have come out and just like short shorts. And that was it. And you guys just got, you coming out I, short I shorts, black t-shirt, give my best this per- time. I didn't, I definitely didn't give my best performance. I just survived. And that was the priority. Just as long as we were staying upright, we count that as a win for that show. 
<laughs> no, oh, absolutely. And it, when it comes to that hot of like a of a show, yeah, when it comes, you're probably not going to put out your best. I mean, it's understandable. There are other factors at play here, and in the audience. We're probably not going to give our best performance either in the pit because after two songs, especially in that kind of heat, we're probably going to be sitting there as like, <gasps> water, water, water. Yeah. <laughs> be like SpongeBob. I don't need it. I don't need it. You know, I you know, way back when. It. So I, I live in LA now, but I'm from Pennsylvania originally, and um, <coughs> I don't know if you're familiar with. Uh, well, you know, you know August Burns Red. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you ever see their live DVD shoot? Uh, the first time they did it, uh, it mm. was like it was like far. From, it was something about home. I forget what it was called. No, I didn't. But it was it was a live DVD filmed in Lancaster in our hometown, and uh, that, that's right where I grew up. And we went to that filming. <coughs> it was filmed in a gymnasium, just like on the basketball court, and they put up a big stage. Uh, but that gym was not really built for two thousand people to be stuffed in there. And it got so hot that they actually stopped the set of that filming multiple times because like the band simply couldn't like put on a DVD recording level show. They, they stopped for a moment. There's somebody with a hose. They took the hoses from the outside and somebody is over Mac Reiner, literally just like, like thumb in the water, just spraying, hosing him down as he's playing. And then people were really struggling in the crowd too. So the hoses are now, this is indoors. This isn't an outdoor show. People have hoses and are just washing people at an indoor basketball court while we're trying to shoot this DVD. And like they, they cut it in a way that it's just consistently the show the whole time. But if you notice, like there will be shots where people are, are fairly dry. And then the next shot, it looks like they just got out of a bathtub. <laughs> and it's because they just have they they just took the ins or the outside hoses and were just spraying people down all night long in order to make it through. That was incredible. One of the best nights of my life. We we had something very similar like that happened at Welcome to Rockville this year. It was a Sunday, and uh, when Radkey was up on there, the band Radkey, just a three piece band. Uh, we got a mosh pit going for it, but again, it was like middle of the day, so it was already like scorching hot. Humidity was getting all of us. But on the stage that they were playing on, they had two hoses on each end, like fire hoses. So they could shoot water just like over and try and wash people. They decided not to shoot the water for Racky set to, into like the majority of the crowd. They shot it <coughs> straight into the pit. That's like on our uh-huh. side. They shot it. The amount of people that like when that water hit, you just looked at all of our faces and it was just like, a, oh, this is so fucking cool. I wish they would have done that uh, for you- spirit boxes set too, though, because we would have just gone absolutely apeshit. But doing that in the gymnasium, I, I don't want to know what the bill was to fix the floor after that, because oh uh, dear I, lord, I don't ask questions. They hey, they make enough money. It was fine. It was worth it. <laughs> it was worth it. It's an experience you're never going to forget <clears throat> because of all the crazy stuff that happened with the heat. It's August burns red in a gymnasium, and the amount of probably the amount of water that had to be flying through those hoses during that set was just, I mean, ungodly. Yeah, they it's. It's goofy that we play the genre that we play as a band because uh, so two of us grew up in the, in that scene, uh, you know, the Lancaster scene where everything was everything was August Burns Red equivalent. Um, I'm so thankful that I grew up in that era because, like, I used to go. It would be like barn shows, going to see August Burns Red, Texas in July, This Is the Apocalypse, uh, Ace, all these real old ones, Ace Augustine, and Early Ending, I'm History. Like, there was this incredible incredible metalcore scene like genre defining years all taking place in this little city in the middle of amish country and i'm so thankful that i got to be able to experience that man like people don't people don't really know uh, just how healthy of a music scene like everybody was in a band when when i was in high school every single person was in a band and these local acts were incredibly talented and and like and I just, I go home now and it's just not the same. And it, it bums me out so much because I'm just so thankful to, to be able to have experienced that. Like we did, I mean, I've done, we used to do stage dives off of hay bales. Like we'd just stack up hay bales and just dive into people. It was such a bizarre time. And I didn't know how incredible it was until I, you know, being as old as, as I am now and being able to think back on it. Like, man, we were so lucky to have that. 
can we do that shit again? Because now I'm thinking stage having off of hay bales. I mean, you just, you just took me from this is like incredibly interesting. I can't believe you got to go through this too. How in the blue hell can I try this? <laughs> we did it with bean bags once at one of our shows. We put bean bags. We put bean bags in the middle of the pit and had people that, uh, stage dive trying to reach the bean bags over top of people. <laughs> <laughs> Until eventually, one of the bean bags broke, and now there's just like, just like feathers and just these like little, just mush balls just flying everywhere. And uh, we, the venue, made us take part in the cleanup, which was respectable. I value that. It was our fault. <laughs> but we were out with vacuums all day long. I don't think we left that place until one in the morning. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, yeah. The, I mean, I already wanted to go see one of your guys' shows after listening to Bones. But, I mean, you just keep selling it even more and more with the fact that, like, this is some of the stuff that you've done in the past. Of course, you know, there's some things you've done in the past that you probably aren't going to do, like the beanbag thing again, because you're probably not going to want to clean up a venue every day until one in the morning. <laughs> but... Just the fact of like seeing how, you know, your mind is working with all these different ideas. It makes me just want to see a show even more from you guys just to potentially wonder what the hell is actually going to happen. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the name of the game, right? Like we're at a spot right now where, <clears throat> again, we're very thankful to be slowly starting to get some bigger touring opportunities. Um, but what do you do with it? You know, just because you're getting the opportunities doesn't mean you're going to grow as a band. You, you have to harness that moment and make sure that you're memorable. You got 25 minutes before they get to go see the real main act. You better damn well make sure that they remember who you are at the end of the night after the headliners play. So it's our job to really think outside of the box and make something creative that no matter what happens the rest of the night, you're going to go, that band are open. That was, that was something different. I haven't experienced that before. That's the name of the game. Yeah, even like there was another band I talked to recently. One of the thoughts from their basis was to do like body suspension, like, you know, like circus kind of style. Or he was going to have like rings in his skin. They was going to be held up by wires while doing a bass solo over the crowd. I'm just like, I'm not sure right, how, no, you thank know. You. Yeah. You, but, lost, you lost me at ring, rings in the skin. <laughs> they, they are, they're, they're going to be a bigger band than we are just because I'm not going to be willing to do that. So more power well, to them. I'll say, I'll say you don't need to be willing to do that, but it's just, it's interesting to hear just like some of the ideas and just like bring up some ideas to other bands. Well, that I've heard not because, you know, yeah. you're going to use them, but because I never know, we you know what that idea might spark in you and where you might, you know, get inspiration from it to take it into something else. And all of a sudden, you know, because I want to see as many of these bands that I have in the podcast grow to the best of their ability and to be the best they possibly can. I want to see them reach all of their goals. So any way I can do to help it by bringing up any kind of, bring up any other kind of ideas that I've had or have seen other bands have just to like, you know, bring some sort of inspiration there. I want to do that because I want to see every one of you guys succeed to the best of your ability. Because again, we talked about it earlier. That's what makes this scene great. That's what's going to continue to make this scene great and bring this scene back to like that level that we all want to be where all of a sudden, you know, the Grammys, it's like, oh, what's best, like best album. All of a sudden, never know. Best album's going to go to sink in. It's like, holy shit. Yeah. Because we made it happen. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's, it takes, it takes more than just the bands to accomplish that. Like, I'm, I'm sure you know this, but like you running a podcast like this is equally as important to making stuff like that happen. It's really cool. I, man, if I would have had podcasts like this when I was 16, 15 years old, starting my first band, it was, well, first off, you realize how many years of my life I would have saved until I figured out how to actually operate within the music, uh, music business and the music industry in general. I really could have used your help. Uh, but seriously, like, and I don't, and I don't know what your demographic breakdown is, but like that, that 16 through 20 listener demographic right now is, is, has you have so many more tools than we had when it came to starting bands and it's really really cool to see and who knows where that's going to take us in five to ten years but podcasts like this are super important for that and it's really great that it's available so to bring it up i actually did look at my demographics recently i had to because of uh, a new sponsor that we just got they wanted to know exactly what the demographic breakdown was right. and the majority when it came to age was between ages 15 and 30 it was were- yeah um, audio stream wise, <laughs> two thirds are men and video stream wise, three quarters are men. Gotcha. Okay. So, oh, that's interesting. You had the video breakdown too. I, boy, I don't, 
see, I'm not a, I'm not a video podcast guy. I'm the, I'm the, like the podcast in the background, go and get my stuff done guy. However, I like just how my, just how my brain works. I need to have like some level of sound happening at all times. I'm not somebody that's comfortable like in pure silence. I'm like the dude who sleeps with the TV on, you know? So like, I'm a, I'm a, I get my stuff done when I'm being productive and just gaining knowledge or humor or whatever I'm listening to from a podcast at the time. But dude, my podcast intake has increased so much over the past four years. It's bananas. Like I've put in 15 hours for the podcast a week, probably at an unhealthy level, but I like to think that they're keeping me company, I guess. Yeah. Oh, Boy, that was a lon- lonely thing to say. I might have, listener, that, I'm keeping you company. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that might, that might've been, but a couple of things on, on that one. It's like, even like with me with podcasts as well as I got really into them once I got out of college, like 2017, it was like, I was listening to them a lot because then I had a full-time job. <laughs> I was working. What was a way to pass the day at the office? It was literally listen to podcasts. It was like, listen to, listen to like a, uh, lead singer syndrome with uh shane toll from silverstein yeah listen to bill burr's podcast i can't get enough of bill burr a couple other crazy ones as well but then all of a sudden it's like when i started my own it was like my podcast intake and really listening to all these other ones including gary v's podcast like it got less and less and less because i was doing more and more and more focusing on this but like even with the like you're talking about you know you're more into the listening side than the watching side that's why i have both because even with myself it's like there's times where i'm not gonna you know I could have it on YouTube or whatnot. It's fun to see, you know, the artists interact and fun to see some of the crazy stuff that might happen. But I also know that podcasts, you know, a lot of people are listening, driving in their cars or at work and, you know, you can't have the video up. So that's what you do on your <coughs> version as well. You got to do both. You got to put it out there. Like with music as well, you have to put it out there in the most accessible way for people to listen to, to for people to access so that you have the greatest chance of success. What made you start? What made me start this whole entire thing? Yeah. Um, tr- trying to save my life, actually. Because <laughs> yeah. Af- yeah, after uh, after I got out of college, it was like, oh, I got the world on my shoulders and everything. From the day I graduated to six months later, my life had completely fallen apart in front of me. Basically, it was hated the job I was working at. The girl that I've been dating and for almost a year, we broke up. And it was just like, I hated everything about life. I hated the fact that life didn't life seemed like it was going to be go to work go home sleep repeat for the next 40 to 50 years and i couldn't yeah. fathom it. and also i couldn't fathom having to work for somebody else at the same point in time i still do have a full-time job to support this until uh, you know i get enough money but it's something where it's like i needed something that <laughs> i could put myself behind that i was responsible for for my own happiness and it took me a while to f- figure out that music was the thing that i wanted to get into and i started in a completely different way but once I started doing the podcast and whatnot, interviewing bands, it was like started to pick up a little bit of steam. Then the pandemic hit and I doubled down the podcast. My thought process was, fuck, if bands aren't playing live shows and bands are sitting at home, what's one of the only ways they can get the, like, the word out about their music? This kind of stuff right, right here. here. So let's double down on it. And now, I mean, I went starting early 2019, I think March of 2019. We're in June of 2022. This is my 314th episode. Wow. Congratulations, man. That's incredible. Well, thank I, you. How, how cool is it? I was just having this conversation with somebody last night. How cool is it when you fall completely backwards into like what your real calling or passion is? Like, like obviously, you know, you, you started this with intention, but like, I'm sure when you started it, you weren't there going like, this is going to be the most impactful thing for me for the next five to 10 years. And how awesome is it that we just get the, the opportunity to just fall completely backwards in, into moments like that? Um, the other thing that I found funny that you said is like, I have that complete character flaw too, which is I, I'm a nightmare as an employee. <laughs> I really am. It's, and it's, I, I, I know, like I, I always say, if I was to start a business tomorrow, I would hire all band guys immediately from like the marketing and business side of things, because we just think so outside the box that you, you would, you would inevitably find success if you could wrangle them in because of your thought process. However, the worst, the worst thing about that would be, they would be nightmares as employees. I, I mean, I, I can't, I, 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 I'm sure I pissed off my bosses in the, ba- in the past so badly. They wanted nothing to do with me. 
and it's a major character flaw. Like when, when I'm all said and done with music, whenever I have to go to my next thing, it's still going to inevitably have to be something that I'm, I have some level of control, creative control over. Otherwise I'm going to go bonkers. So I'm very glad that you found the thing <laughs> that you have that flaw too. And you were able to find the independent thing. Cause right now my independent thing is the band and, uh, until I get that solved, I'm not really going to be a great employee for anybody. That's for sure. <laughs> well, hope, well, hopefully, we won't have to solve that issue. Hopefully, the band gets uh, like the success that you want to get to achieve the pure happiness that you want and where you want to go in life, so that you never have to go back to that. Even like when it comes to like the employee side of things and like having to work for someone else, still the full time job. I have found that balance of you know being the best employee that I can be so that I continue to make money at that job to support this until it's going, but also <laughs> still focused on this enough to have passion on it. Because for me, it's just, you know, even though I have to go to th that job and yes, is it, is, is it, I'll put it this way. Is it the best job? No job is going to be the best job. It's a lot better than the one I used to have though. However, yeah. there's a certain like drive that I still have kind of behind it because I know where the end goal is. I know the end goal is me doing this full time, having a blast doing it, talking as many bands as possible, promoting as many bands as possible, and going and just experiencing music and life the way that I want to experience and live it. So if I still had that motivation, I can still go and, you know, put in the time there, do my best job there so that I can do the best job here. I can put the best focus I can here, put the best foot forward. So, you know, hopefully within the next couple of years, maybe two, three years, all of a sudden, We'll be, you know, how about this? Two years when you do that, like rehash that scorecard kind of thing and see kind of the six bands I picked and see where you guys are because you pick for your five bands to like the next one's up, sink in, sink in, sink in, sink in, and of course sink in. We'll do that. And, you know, <laughs> hopefully at that point, we will both be at the point where it's like, man, this is awesome. You know, we said two years ago we were going to achieve those dreams and like really make sure that we were fully independent on our own and just kicking ass. Yeah, we fucking did it. That's right. Look at, listen to, hey, hey, kids at home. Listen to the gold blasting out of your headphones right now. This man is giving you the blueprint. Thank you in advance. A 16-year-old Ty wishes he had this blueprint. <laughs> Even, But also, current Ty is happy that he's doing what he's doing right now. And Absolutely. loving every second of it. And after, you know, everyone listening, after you're getting this blueprint, listen to this gold, you want to listen to some gold as well? Well, go and check out Bones by Sinking because it is out right now. And you're going to want to pre-save, pre-order Welcome to Phantom Land, which comes out on August 12th as well because, you know, we got to promote your shit anyway. Or I just say promote your gold anyway because it ain't shit. This is good fucking music, man. <laughs> uh, how's that for a transition? Yeah. Um, yeah, our first single just came out. Uh, called Bones, and um, it's been a long time coming for this record. We <coughs> we kind of closed up shop during the pandemic, and decided to um, really make make a make a roadmap for what was going to happen as a band as soon as we were able to kind of get back into the real world. And um, so the first EP comes out in August, August twelfth, and it's actually one of two. They're going to be back to back this year, where uh, you're going to constantly be getting new music from Sink In, and it's all a con it's all a concept record that ties in together that <coughs> when it's all said and done it will be one full piece of art that front to back tells a story and uh i'm super super excited of uh, you know i'm very thankful for my guys and how how gifted they are <laughs> like i get to work with some of the best musicians i my guitarists are some of the best musicians on the planet and i'm so thankful that i get to work with them because the way their brain works and what they were able to accomplish with with this music it's awesome, and I, I just can't wait to be able to share it, man. Oh, absolutely. So, everyone, go and listen to Bones right after this podcast. But if you want a little bit of, you know, what I thought of Bones, just so that you get a little bit of that take behind it, I thought that right from the get-go, the heavier backing you guys had in that song with the electronic kind of whoops and woes <laughs> in that intro really set the tone for mix like kind of like a heavier post-hardcore and a pop rock flow kind of coming together. Once the verses start and you start singing with like that softer, kind of more pop influence vocal set in the verses, honestly, my mind went straight to a band that I mentioned earlier with Varsity and how that mix really works into play, mixing a couple of different styles up there to really bring in a flow that makes it stand out. It shows the flowing connection between styles of pop and post hardcore while the band stays softer and more mellow in the verses. But once that chorus hits, the heavier guitars come right in with your <coughs> vocals getting a little bit scratchier. This is where you see the blend of those two styles in contrast come together in perfect connection and honestly, I mean, you're going to get something out of this song where you're going to listen to it at first. You're going to be like, 
these styles are really working together and after the words you're going to be saying oh hell yeah when the hell is welcome to phantom land coming out can we get it now because we want it now gonna have to wait gonna have to wait but yeah i think see Bone, bones was the first single because i think uh, that was a perfect description of it it kind of has all of the elements of sink in like I, I said in one interview already i think bones is the most sink in sounding sink in song ever where uh hopefully for, for a new listener it kind of defines the direction and then from there you can go and listen to where we expand with songs like ghost and how we get a little bit softer with a song like like tired eyes or drive and uh, I think it defines it defines the main core elements of us as a band and, and how we kind of blend all these genres because we're coming from so many different backgrounds. Um, and then it allows us to kind of expand from there and really try and push the boundaries as we go. Yeah, and that's kind of like when I was listening to why I kind of was like picking up some vibes from the band Varsity as well, just in terms of not the sound, but in terms of this, the ability to mix so many different styles together and have them, you know, stand out in contrast, but also have that contrast work so well that everything still flows so cohesively through this song. Like I, it didn't skip a beat for my end. So I'm like, well, I got to thank Cody Frayne for this one for introducing you guys, because otherwise I would have missed out on something absolutely fantastic. And now I'm making sure no one misses out on this. Because we can't miss out on this. That, that's exact. Hey, this is this is the song for pulling out your flannel shirts, but making sure only one button is on because you need enough you need enough wiggle room to be able to dance and groove a little bit. Yeah, just have that just have that bottom button on and just like or you know <laughs> or if you know you want to have two bottom buttons on because that's usually what I do with this shirt right here. You know you can do that, but just make sure you have that flow to get that wiggle room going because you're gonna want to vibe to this song because it's a lot of fucking fun to vibe to. Ooh, yeah. We're, we're Hawaiian rock. That's the new vibe. Hawaiian rock, Punko's Parrot. Man, we went through so much shit on this podcast. <laughs> it's just Punko's Parrot. Punko's Parrot is my favorite. That one, see, I are, I, okay, I already have the artwork. You ready for this? <clears throat> parrot. But the parrot has tattoos down its wings. That's it. That's literally it. It's just the parrot with tattoos. That, I'm going to sell 500 of these CDs and you're going to get 50% of the royalties and we're going to, we're going to make an empire together. Let's forget the band of the podcast. We're now the, the, the Margaritaville cover guys. <laughs> we're the punk goes parrot guys. <laughs> Hell yeah. We're going to, we're going to drop everything right now. We're going to go do punk goes parrot. Oh yeah. Oh, bring it, bring it in the, the, the Audi car payment checks. <laughs> man, <laughs> man, probably, you know, me, I'm just be like, Oh, what kind of car payment you got? Chevy Impala. Why? <laughs> It was practical. <laughs> See, when I moved to California, I, uh, I, I I wanted, you know, the budget wasn't massive, but I, I wanted a California car. Like, I got my dream of moving to LA. What am I going to do with that now? And I bought a 2007 Toyota Solara. It's like, it's like sky blue ragtop convertible. Has a little hitch on the back. I bought it for a thousand dollars from an old grandma, and that was her like retirement car, and she could no longer drive. So I now I, I have my little baby, my little my little blue ragtop convertible that I drive all around town all day long in L.A. And uh, I'm living it, baby. I'm living I'm living the uh, the coconut water and sunshine dream. <laughs> I'll say when it comes to that kind of just like picking up on that too. When it comes to like what I drive, I drive a freaking silver 06 Subaru Legacy. The, oh, yeah. The engine, when I turn it over, it sounds like a go-kart. Like, that's how it sounds. Like, it's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just the way it sounds. And I looked at them like, <laughs> when it comes to me doing a rock and metal podcast in the upper Midwest, going to all these shows, moshing and whatnot, why does this car just make sense? It does. It does. Like, the... The the old Subaru Legacy or the Subaru Forester guy pulling up makes sense for me, like going back to like champ shows in Pennsylvania. <laughs> see, see me, I I need I have hus I have huskies, so I have like the hammock in the back where they 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 can have they can have the air flowing, but they're in their little hammock all tied together. See, I see if I roll when I roll up to a show in, in my in my ride, people are very very confused. They're wondering why Gertrude is rolling up to the uh to the post arc course show and uh they're wondering who's who's gonna get the walker for her out of the trunk so they can help her stand up and make her way to the show <laughs> and then i pull up to shows and it's just like you see that silver 06 legacy and you're hearing like rise against or ice night kills blasting from inside you're just like yep they're like he's got, he's got enough room for our base cab after the show <laughs> 
or, or more it's like or more it's like if, if i pull up and there's a band that's outside and they hear that pulling up the first probably thought process we know exactly where we're gonna find that guy once we start playing he's gonna be in the middle of that pit he's not getting out and they nope. would be a hundred percent right <laughs> going to be parked right beside crop top guy in his, uh, in his, uh, Ford Ranger. Right beside crop top guy in his Ford Ranger and right next to, um, Jayco jeans guy in his, uh, 2002 Ford Taurus. <laughs> 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 oh man. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. I, we're painting pictures of, of, of my high school years, baby. Rest in peace to the, to the champ in Lemoyne. That's you're, you're describing my, you're describing my, my best friends. This is great. Well, I love this. Well, shit, Ty, you're going to have to come to the Midwest, come, you know, play a couple of shows up here, come, you know, see a couple of shows up here with us, and we can just have a fucking blast. Where are you at? Milwaukee, exactly? Wisconsin. Okay. We are, uh, we play a festival in Appleton, and then we play, um, we play in, in like the, the, like the Tri Cities area in July. It's like a last minute show. It's actually just getting announced, I think, like tomorrow, actually. So, uh, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to plan a little little coffee together, buddy. We're gonna have to make this happen. Oh, we will make it happen because you'll see it. You'll you'll see how we'll make it happen just like this. So, Ty, as we bring this podcast to its conclusion, what I always like to end this with before I go and do my ending stuff is give you a chance to say whatever you want to say, plug whatever you want to plug, promote whatever you want to promote at the end of the <coughs> podcast. So, Ty, my friend, the floor is yours. At Sync in Band everywhere, uh, you can text the word Sync S I N K to the number three three two 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 to get added to our text message list and you'll actually get the album and all of the singles before anybody else uh come see us live we're playing literally everywhere on planet earth over the next six months i swear to you if i get another text message saying come to my town when i was in your town yesterday i'm gonna blow a head gasket <laughs> love you but seriously uh and then last but not least hey if you found a band this week that you never heard of even if it's not us find a way to support them outside of the four walls of your bedroom that you're listening to I don't care if that means sharing their music with, with somebody. I don't care if that means buying a T-shirt. It takes all of us to be able to grow this together. And I say it every single night on tour. You know, if we can all do that together, when you go see your next favorite band, you bring three friends. And then those three friends bring three more. And your favorite band's going to have to keep on moving up to the bigger and badder venues. We're going to have to do that together. And it takes all of us. Uh, if it did mean listening to us for the first time and it was us, uh, hello. Nice to meet you. I promise we don't suck live. Come see us. Well, we're going to take that promise and we're going to hold you to it. So that was a fantastic way to close up. And now it's time for you to close out with three very specific things. So one, when it comes to finding synced in online, when it comes to connecting with them, when it comes to being a part of that text platform as well, you're not going to want to miss out on any of it. But you know me, <coughs> I studied economics when I was in college. I know a thing or two about incentives and convenience and convenience is key in this instance. You're not going to want to go and search all this stuff up yourself. You're going to want to have me put in the description of the podcast for you, label everything and have all the links right next to it so you can click on the link and go like their stuff, share their stuff, list their stuff, pre-order the album, find out where they're playing live, all that good kind of stuff. So that's exactly what the hell we're going to do. You're not going to miss out on anything with Sync In. All you do is go to the podcast here. It says find Sync In online. All the links and labels are going to be in the description right there for you. So you're not going to be able to miss out on it in any capacity. There you go. Now it's time for number two. Now this is where that, you know, fun thing comes in, Ty. So <coughs> usually, typically, normally, when I have guests in the podcast, at the end of the podcast, there, I always tend to make a certain promise. And the reason I tend to make the certain promise is because I want to support you guys in any way I can and also continue to support you guys in the future. So my promise to you is this. This only ever happens if I like fans that I have in the podcast. So this happens every single time. And you, my friend, you're keeping this train rolling. So when I can see you perform live for the first time or whenever you're around, if we can make it happen, here's the promise to you, my good man. First round's on me. <laughs> there we go. I like it. I'll hold you to that. Oh, you better hold me to it because I got to pay up on my debts. Plus, it means I got to go see you play live. So there you go. Yeah. I'll bring the Hawaiian shirt, baby. I'll bring the Hawaiian shirt. We'll go. Yeah. Bring the Hawaiian shirt. We'll go. We'll go play the rave or one of those places up there. And we'll we'll make it a good night. Oh, dude, if you play the rave, I mean, I'll be there within five minutes. That's how long it takes me to drive from here to there. That's awesome. That's a, that's a, that's a bucket list place for sure. Oh, and I, that's that's probably my favorite place to go pl see a show, mostly because of all the different stages. On top of that, it's five minutes away. It's a fucking awesome venue. So, what? Ghosts, baby, ghosts. 
Oh, I've experienced the ghost before. I've seen them. <laughs> that's a that's a whole other podcast. That's a whole that's a whole other podcast. But as we bring this podcast to conclusion, Ty, this cannot end with a goodbye for a number of reasons. One, this was too fucking cool. Two, we cannot have this be the only time we be, have a podcast because we got to come back in at the very at the very worst two years to look back at that scorecard and see how we've done. And three, I got to make good on that promise. I got to pay up my debt. So is this goodbye, my friend? Hell no, it's not goodbye. This is see you later. Later on. Well, folks, I'm going to interview with Ty from the band Sync. And once again, their brand new EP, Welcome to Fancy Line, comes out on August 12th. Their newest song, Bones, is already available right now. So go check out Bones. Go pre-save. Go pre-order. Welcome to Phantom Land. You're not going to want to miss out on it. Also, check them out because they're going to be on tour at some place near you in the next six months. So don't miss out on this. Plus, you heard some of the crazy stuff they've done at their shows before. I mean, and that they've seen at shows before. They're going to employ all that. They're going to win you over in those 25 minutes. So don't miss out on any of it whatsoever. You're not going to miss out. You're not going to miss out on this band. So the best way to do that is to go into the description of the podcast. See where it says find sync in online and follow them on their social stream music tell me like music, music follow them on all the platforms as well buy some tickets buy some merch and support these guys because you're definitely going to want to trust me on that it's all down there for you also make sure you're following subscribing to the core progression podcast we're on facebook twitter instagram and tiktok for your crazy social content stuff we'll make you laugh with a lot of stuff from the podcast we do live streams on instagram every single wednesday and you're not going to miss out on anything that we have there also, when it comes to the podcast, you can subscribe to the Corporate Crush Podcast on YouTube, or you can also follow along with us and subscribe to us on Spotify, a podcast, I hear you, and Amazon if you're more of the audio stream follower kind of guy or gal or whatever you identify as. On top of that, if you are already subscribed to the podcast, a gigantic thank you to you as well because you're the ones making this, you know, making this dream into reality. So keep it up, keep it up. I appreciate the support and I want to thank you once again. If you are new here and you want to subscribe, thanks for stopping by. And thank you for subscribing as well. Really appreciate it. Glad to have you on board. If you're here, you're like, I like the podcast, but I don't feel like subscribing. Two things. One, please reconsider, sir. Secondly, thank you for stopping by as well. You're always welcome back here to enjoy some more Core Progression podcast stuff as we continue to grow. Also, I want to thank the support for this podcast coming from Manscaped. We save balls with Manscaped. With their performance pack, again, it includes the Lawnmower 4.0, the Weed Whacker for your ear and uh, nose hair trimming, the Crop Preserver anti chafing Ball Deodorant, which is a freaking godsend if you chafe down there. Trust me, I use that all the time. I use that for the past two years, and it has saved myself when it comes to running, when it comes to working out, when it comes to hot days, when it comes to concerts and mosh pits. Man, no chafing down there. It also comes with the... Uh, ball toner as well the crop reviver and also the shave mask where you can read out manscape we save balls remember 20 percent off and free worldwide shipping use the code cpp at manscape's website manscape.com link description of the podcast also remember we're sponsoring when we were hungry festival out in las vegas nevada on october 20th and 21st go get your tickets now link search to the podcast on that note thanks ty for being in the podcast this was absolutely fantastic can't wait to meet you in person and on that note that's gonna be for me today, guys thank you for watching this to the core progression podcast my name is kevin and you guys know how i eat every single one that's the big healthy and hearty see ya yeah